Monday, we first told you Florida's entire congressional delegation reviving the push to get a nuclear carrier to Naval Station Mayport. Both U.S. Senators and all 27 reps signed a letter to the Secretary of Defense. Senator Marco Rubio was one of those penning that. And what's different this time than other efforts to get a nuclear carrier here to Mayport, Senator? Well, I don't know. We, we, we're trying to make it different than the other times. The holdup has not been the Navy. The Navy believes that it should be there according to their strategic plan. But there's a lot of infrastructure that's needed in order to make that possible. And there are other delegations, primarily in Virginia, that don't that want to keep two aircraft carriers there. And so they block in the budget process that infrastructure. So we've got to work to overcome that because it's not just good for Florida. It's the right thing for the country. For anyone who's, who's rode through the, uh, the storylines over the last 10 years uh, since uh, uh, USS John F. Kennedy was decommissioned, we've seen significant changes and an uptick in activity at Mayport. Uh, any concern that this uh, effort to getting out there may uh, provide some false hope? I mean, we've been talking about this for 10 years. Well, I don't think about false hope. It's where it belongs. Uh, the Navy has a strategic plan for positioning assets, and it has said that it needs a second warm water port on the east, uh, southeastern coast of the United States, and that Florida should be the place where it, be, where it is. So we're just trying to get the Navy's plan in place, and it's being blocked for parochial political purposes. So we're not going to stop uh, pushing on it. We've raised it multiple times. I saw the chairman of the National Security Council yesterday raised it with him over at the White House. So we, I'm, I'm optimistic we can get something done finally here. But uh, we've got to continue to work on it. We've outlined the plan at WOKV.com. And the health care bill is the House is preparing for a vote likely tomorrow in its current form. Are you a yes vote? Are you ready to support it once it lands to the Senate? Well, I'm not going to comment on the House bill because it's still a work in progress. By the time I give you a statement now, that bill could change in the next 12 hours, and then I'm on record as supporting something that changed. I will tell you that the things we need to focus are the following. Okay, The majority of Americans get their health care through Medicare, which is not being touched in this bill, through their employer, and we want to ensure changes happen to make employer-sponsored health care more affordable. The rest of Americans, uh, and it's a significant number of people, though a smaller percentage overall, about 20 percent of Americans or so are getting their health insurance either through, uh, from the government through Medicaid or on one of these exchanges. So the two issues we really have to focus on is how does this treat Florida on Medicaid? Does it treat us fairly compared to all these other states who expanded Medicaid and now are going to get extra money because they did that? And uh, that's not fair to Florida, who I believe did the fiscally right thing. And the other thing I would point to is are the tax credits big enough to create a robust uh, private uh, marketplace where people can afford to buy health insurance? Uh, those are the things that I'm going to be looking at. I know that we're contemplating some amendments to improve the tax credit, which was a part of my plan when I ran for president and for re-election. But I have to wait and see what the House produces because they've got their own drama going on over there, and I don't know what the bill is going to look like by the time it comes out. You're not one of the 20 on the Judiciary Committee, but I'm sure you kind of checked in periodically on how Justice uh, Judge Gorsuch uh, did yesterday in the Supreme Court nomination hearings. Overall, does it get through the Senate? I think so. Uh, there's no reason to vote against them. Uh, certainly there's no reason to filibuster them. And I hope the Democrats don't decide to do that because I think it blows up the filibuster. Look, uh, Judge Gorsuch, I mean, I, I don't know how – that's – I don't know how you can – that's the best possible pick you can imagine. This is a serious person. He's not uh, highly regarded, had you know, the highest rating possible from the American Bar Association. You can see that some Democrats are just straining to find any excuse to be against him. But if they're going to invoke – uh, the filibuster, use the filibuster against him, they're never going to vote for anybody. So I hope that doesn't happen and we can get him through. And if they want to vote against him, they can. But it should be on 51 votes, not the filibuster. They should not filibuster him. There is no reason to filibuster him. Senator Marco Rubio, appreciate you checking in with us on Jacksonville's Morning News. At